The Infiniti QX50 has been around nearly a decade and we've had one refresh. This year we have a new sport trim which gives us some dynamic looks on the exterior, bringing some of that performance look into the interior with the reshaped center console here at Infiniti at Clearwater. We got the 2023 model. Slate gray over graphite interior. Unfortunately, it doesn't do anything for your numbers underneath the hood. This has a lot of competition because it's a super crowded market, but Infiniti wants to go more towards the SUVs, crossovers, and EVs because that's where the money is. Similar to BMW, Volvo, Acura, and Mercedes. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm going to go over all the specs and details starting now. Since the redesign of 2019, the eye-inspired LED headlamps and daytime runnings have definitely set the charm. Because we got the sport package, it now furthers into a double arch grill, deeper diamond mash, the gloss black in the mash, and around it, that that goes seamlessly into the headlamp assembly and on the lower curtain with your LED fog lamps. Ground clearance the best at 8.6 inches, beating the Germans, the Swedish, everybody in its segment. 20 inch multi-spoke alloy wheels. The disc reading behind it at 13 inches, the rear at 12.1 inches. The front suspension is a McPherson strut with coil springs over shock absorbers and a stabilizer bar. The rear is a multi-link with a stabilizer bar. 5941 weight distribution, a length at 187.4 inches, the wheelbase 110.2 inches. Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 will be the smallest variant. And then this one, every vehicle besides that will be longer, whether it's BMW, Genesis, Acura, and the styling for the the QX50 is going to have that slope roof line, but it doesn't sacrifice in headspace. You're not getting that with the Q5 for Audi or the BMW X5. You can with the X4, but when you're going into these, you start paying more money. When you're in Infinity, you don't. If you want it to be full coupe, you go to the QX55, and it's basically the same exact vehicle, except the front is a little bit more aggressive, and you get a little bit less cargo capacity. Towing isn't the best, 3,000 pounds. The BMW X3 at 4,400 pounds will be the best, and it'll beat everybody in its segment. LED tail lamps, they wrap around and go right into that gloss black strip. The badging blacked out with the S, because this is a sport. On the lower, you'll get your dual exhaust outlets also blacked out, so it's keeping all the sport here even into the rear. Power lift gate going inside to 31.1 cubic feet. You have a 12 volt here on the side. Underneath you'll have storage and you can open this up and you'll have a little bit more storage between your Bose upgraded amplifier. The nice thing about Infinity, unlike most of the rivals, you can split fold the rear bench at a 60-40 split in the back, increasing cargo to 64.4 cubic feet, which is the best in class. It's a lower and wider opening VC turbocharged engine. Let's go inside, start up, so you can hear that exhaust then. And they back the performance of a 2.0 liter variable compression turbo engine or VC turbocharged four cylinder producing 268 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque. The front wheel drive is paired to a CVT transmission achieving 23 to 29 MPGs. That's good for a zero to 60 around 6.4 to 6.7 seconds with a quarter mile, just over 15 seconds. Top speed around 140 miles per hour. Going inside the new Sport QX50. Headroom, 40 inches. Legroom, 39.8 inches. 12-way power seat adjustment for the driver. Heated, ventilated, eight-way power seat adjustment for the passenger, memory for the driver. The interior gets that coupe sporty feel to it with a carbon fiber look that brushes from the dash into the door panels. And it's a two-tier dashboard setup with your dual touchscreen infotainment or infinity in touch with navigation on the top. The lower will be for your climate control, for your driving modes, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. And you have a pinch with a swipe. And down through here, you can just 
go through to see all of your features in which you have and your driver assistance, which you could turn on and off. Put it into reverse because it's a sport. We get a 360 degree reverse camera, full trajectory. You can also change the different positions of your camera and you could do so right here next to your rotary knob. Going into a CD player and you still have buttons to turn on and off your climate control. It is more driver focused, that's why we have this cutoff right here. This center area has been redesigned so you get the new gear lever, your cup holders, USB-A and C port with a 12 volt with a wireless charging pad. It's gonna be more sport derived, open up inside, two tiers of storage that goes into your leather wrap, heated steering wheel. It's multi-function with the paddle shifters. The gauge cluster has a digital reader in the center that can go through an array of information for the driver, anything from your services to any driving settings and your turn-by-turn -turn navigation. The dashboard otherwise is flat, no heads-up display, upgraded Bose sound system with that carbon fiber interior look, soft materials everywhere, one touch up and down, dual pane windows for the front with a large storage pocket that I would say you can fit maybe four or five 16.9 ounce bottles and even a burrito. For the back seats, I'm not really able to use the armrest because they're so low on both sides, but 38.7 inches of headroom, 38.4 inches of leg room, which is sufficient for someone six foot three. The door panel gets the same materials that are in the front. Everything is soft to touch, one touch up and down, and a storage pocket that you can fit a two liter bottle of soda. You can also recline these seats back in which I would be able to use the actual armrest. If you keep it in this position, it's not too bad, but again, I wish this had maybe an area to sit because it just sits forward. You can also move these all the way up to get optimal cargo space. And unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to sit very comfortably back here. But it is good that you have four-way manual adjustments for this price point. The center gets a USB-A and C port, a storage tray with your air vents in the center, storage behind both of the front seats. The floor is not completely flat. Setting it to the center, headroom is no issue, nor is feet, but leg and shoulder space because they've actually carved out for the front seats, the rails, if you're anyone from maybe 10 to 12 foot in your shoe dimensions, you're gonna fit perfectly fine and you're not actually sharing that much room. Whereas when you get into the competition, the rails are too far back in most of them. And because the seats are not so wide, because these are smaller SUVs, you're gonna be more up close to personal here. You actually have optimal space. 268 horsepower, 280 pound-feet of torque. Is it gonna be fast? Well, let's see. you're gonna get a drone-like exhaust them. There's really nothing that's gonna go around when you have a turbo four cylinder. The cool thing about the VC turbocharged though is when you don't push it so hard, it actually gets you optimal gas consumption like a four cylinder diesel. When you push it hard, it goes into a V6, so it starts really drinking. It's not a V6, but it goes to the power for that. So it does take a little bit of time to get used to the pedal, but for the most part, because I've reviewed these cars quite a bit, it's not really that difficult. I do like the flat dashboard layout. The slowest variant is actually the Volvo XC60 B5, and it's a few tenths of a second slower than this one, which, you know, you can still get up to speed quick enough. The quarter mile is pretty decent, so going onto the interstate, it doesn't necessarily die or go to a level like a Mazda, I would say, because it typically with a Mazda, once you start going up past 60, 70, it takes a little bit more of a kick. The VC turbocharge actually still pushes because of that V6 power feel in which it makes it a little bit more responsive. As for the width, it's so dynamic in the interior of this compared to every single vehicle because of the double arched hood. The way it sets up, it really just makes you wanna speed, but it's not really that fast of a vehicle. But I mean, to show you on the interstate again, I mean, you still catch up to the speed of everyone else. Visibility around you is good. You don't have such a slope roof line, so it doesn't really hurt you for blind spots in the back. And it's not so wide, so getting into areas, you can do so even if they're a little tight. Some hard braking. 
you can stop on a dime if you need to. Acura and Genesis is actually going to be the most horsepower in this comparison in the price point of this. Obviously, with BMW, Mercedes, and Audi, you can go up the tier and you can get a lot faster and a lot more horsepower variants. But we're hovering a 50 grand price tag. It's really hard to get these performance numbers out of something in which is priced like this. The VC turbocharged engine goes from an 8.1 compression ratio to 14.1, which means when you downshift, CPT doesn't really matter to downshift. I really wouldn't use the paddle shifters personally. I would just push it because it seems to be a little bit faster when you do so. The sound deadening is good. It has a little bit more of a sport feel to the suspension, but it's very comfortable in the seats. That's gonna take me to some things I like and dislike, and that's what we're gonna start talking about. What I like about this vehicle is now the interior has changed just a touch in this center area. It's more cleaned up, and things doesn't go every which way because they actually have a stationed area for your wireless charging pad. Last year's model and prior was a huge open box in which if you pushed it like that, your phone would go all over the place and yet it wouldn't be charging here. It sloped down a little bit so it actually holds the phone. The second thing that I like, the sports trim. Yeah, everything is gloss black which makes it look super sporty thing that I dislike though, no increase of horsepower or torque, and you know they can do that out of this VC turbocharged engine. The last thing that I like is in the cargo. You can split fold the rear bench in the trunk, which is awesome because when you're in this size vehicle, I mean, face it, you're going to be folding down those seats whenever you buy large objects. And I hate the fact that every time I go into any of the rivals, I got to go into the back seat and then adjust the seat down. It's just too much work. Put it in the back, just like Infinity. The second thing that I dislike is this driver focused setup because it's not really driver focused. They just put this little wall in which it would be a little bit better of a design if they added that leatherette around the other side and just drop that little piece because it makes it easier for them on the passenger side to use the USB-C or A port. For your everyday use, you will be hitting around two and a half to three RPMs. And the funny thing is how they do the RPMs because zero and one are so close that it just shows you you're gonna be hitting two to three RPMs all the time. And you really want to because it's a turbocharged engine, you wanna clean out the combustion chamber so that way it doesn't build up any of those composites inside. The last thing that I dislike is the sun being in my way. Actually, the last thing that I dislike is the adaptive cruise control and the lane keep assist. If you do not put your hands on it, it does like a police charm, which is kind of funny. It just, if you're in the heat of the moment and it's doing that and it throws on your indicators for an emergency, it really just makes the driver a little bit more of a panic situation because I mean, the exterior is so darn sporty, I feel like I'm gonna get a ticket every time I go into the interstate. Comparing it against the Genesis GV70, it is an awesome interior. Look at this thing, look at this. And you see maneuverability, you can get in and out of traffic. So I'm telling you, it's fast enough for your daily use and it gives you enough of that boost to get you excited and that heart beating fast. As for Genesis, the GV70 is a great interior. I mean, they do the best job, I think so, for the price that you're getting. The smaller variant engine isn't bad, but you would obviously want to do the 3.3 turbo or twin turbo because it has a lot of power underneath it. Towing is going to be more in that than this. Interior space though, cargo is going to be the best here. As for the back seats, you actually have a little bit more room even though that's a little bit longer of a vehicle. As for BMW, the X3 is going to have more of that dynamic drive. It's a little bit more pleasurable, closer to the 50-50 weight distribution. The X4 will be a perfect 50-50 weight distribution if you option up to around eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000, in which you can get a his and her QX50. As for Mercedes, when you go into the GLC 300, it's a little bit slower of a variant, but it's a little bit quicker in, than this. The interior, I do like the two screen panel. That's one glass. Turn radius about two lanes, give her a go. As for the Acura RDX, you're not gonna get touch screen. The interior though has that sporty feel, very dynamic and athletic. You have the most horsepower in class comparing to all of these vehicles in the sense of price point. Taking it back to the QX50, I just feel like you have a good total package because this is more than 
the average person would use for towing capabilities and cargo. I like to thank Infinity of Clearwater for giving us this 2023 Infinity QX50 for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Click the next video and the subscribe button. Check out the merchandise website and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like.